Hey everybody, thanks for uh, coming out to the Partners in Business session here. I'm Todd Dills, the editor of Overdrive Magazine. And um, we put out this uh, business manual that you see up on the screen here every year, updated um, from year to year with uh, new content from Overdrive covering uh, new information that uh, owner operators and small fleets in the business need to know. I mean, generally it covers, it runs the gamut from you know, basic, very basic things for aspiring owners or folks that really don't have a, have a clear uh, handle on their revenue and costs here. Um, you know, basic, very basic things like that, tool, self-help tools that you can use to, to sort of lay the groundwork for what you're doing in the business, all the way up to, you know, this, this picture here on the, uh, that you see on the left is uh, you know, one that uh, I think we saw a lot of last year uh, uh, going around social media as the, uh, the numbers got gaudier and gaudier on the fuel pumps. Uh, so, so in this in this new manual, actually, we have an updated section on handling uh, fuel sur surcharges and rate contracts with shippers for independents. Um, you know, if, if that's a, if that's something that you've never never done before, uh, there's different ways to do it. Lots of things to consider. To you know, we have a, we have a new section. Um, we have we have a, an entire chapter devoted to sort of compliance issues and. Uh, rates of inspection here shown uh, in this chart, uh, where we basically giving you an idea of, of, of where you're most likely to be inspected. So when you go there, you, you, you're fully prepared. Um, and this year, we also added a big section on uh, the issue of double brokering that's really, really taken off in the last few years, and ways to, ways to spot that you might be dealing with a, a double broker if you're an independent working the load boards. Uh, a lot of links to other resources. You see this, uh, uh, this what are your rights when a broker doesn't pay. This is a, this is a YouTube video. It's part of a truck uh, series we have called Trucking Law that runs through uh, a lot of the legalities around uh, contracts and, and, and other things, other areas of the business. Uh, it's a video series uh, embedded right here in, this, in the manual that you can download uh, right at our website. I encourage you to go there. Uh, after we get out of here, and uh, you know, and check it out, you know, and take it home with you, uh, peruse it at your will. I think it's good for it's good for aspiring owners. It's good for new owners. I think it's also good for uh, for those that have been in the business a long time. A lot of the information in here is current. We update it every single year, and um, I think it can be a resource to anyone really uh, in the business of trucking. And so today, though, I'm going to hand this thing off uh, uh, forthwith uh, to Mr. Gary Bucks. Uh, who is the uh, owner-operator business coach and has been the contributor to Overdrive now for several years. Um, and uh, most importantly, who's going to lead us through uh, the majority of this presentation, Mr. Mike Hosted, who's the H uh, HBS vice president. Uh, and uh, HBS is a owner-operator business services firm, a uh, lot of uh, accounting resources, uh, consultancy, and, uh, you know, just, just a great resource for, uh, for owner-operators all up and down the uh, all different aspects, uh, uh, niches in the business, small fleets as well. So here you go, Mike. Uh, why don't you take it away? And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go take my seat and listen intently. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Todd. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, I've been doing this many years. This is my second year doing this with Gary. Um, so it's, I'm, I'm happy to be here again and, and to be able to share the wealth of information we have on what's going on in the owner operator world. Um, what you can do to make some slight changes, you know, to put more money in your pocket, right? And that's the ultimate goal here. So Gary and I are just going to talk through kind of what's going on in the industry, um, what we're seeing from owner operators, how it all works. So um, ATBS, as Todd said, is uh, a back office firm for independent contractors. Uh, we do bookkeeping, profit and loss statements, budgeting, and then most importantly, income taxes, but as well as business coaching like Gary does. Um, and so yeah, it's just very important that we understand what's happening, what we can do to change, and, and how we can progress in what's a softer market than what we're used to, right? So we'll get started here um, and just kind of go through the state of the industry, what we're seeing, and, and kind of go from there. So, um, so first off, like I said, what's going on in trucking? Um, it's changed a lot. We did this a year ago, and a year ago, while fuel had gone up, um, freight was still on fire. And we thought that was going to last a lot longer than it did. There were many factors that led to the change, um, but it changed drastically over the last year, and so we have to think differently. We have to run our businesses differently. When times get tougher, we have to react. Um, and, and so we're gonna talk a lot about that today. 
Yeah, I, I think about when I, when I look at this and I look back, any of you that were here a year ago, or not, but in business, I, I like to pose the question, what would you have done differently from last year to this year? That's a good way to assess your business. Always be thinking about continuous improvement. Always be thinking about how can you assess, how can you make that? But that's a simple question. So if you were here, we're gonna look at these numbers and look back and you're gonna see some things. But what could you have done last year to this year that would have helped you now? That's what you're looking for. We need help now. Awesome, thanks Gary. Um, so first off, again, let's look at what's going on in the trucking market. So the first thing I'm gonna look at here is a truckstop.com index. And so what this is is telling us what's going on in the spot market. Um, and so this is, this is over a long period of time here. Now that red line, um, that's what we consider the break even point. So if, if the line is above that red line, things are generally good in the spot market for owner operators. If our trend is below that red line, that means it's gotten a lot tougher in the spot market. Um, it's a lot harder to succeed. And so what we've seen in the spot market was coming out of the pandemic, we had all time highs in terms of the volume of freight and then also the rates that we were seeing in freight. And so on the left here, we see this chart. This is the number of loads per one truck looking for a load on truckstop.com. And so you can see we actually peaked um, about November of 21. We were seeing about 240 loads per one truck looking for a load in the spot market. So there was just incredible volume of freight that we've never seen before. And if you look over time, in the past we peaked at about 70 loads. There was that much freight to be hauled in the spot market. Not only that, but we peaked at about 323 a mile. Um, so it's just incredible. The biggest boom cycle we've ever seen in trucking by a long shot. Normally when we have a boom cycle, you can see in 2018 it lasts six, maybe nine months. But because of all these factors, we had a very long cycle. Well, fast forward to about a year ago, and fuel prices skyrocketed, inflation, wars overseas, you name it, and the amount of freight fell off a cliff. And so fast forward to now, we're sitting at about 55 loads per one truck with a rate of 243. Um, so what that means is we lost 80% of the available freight in the spot market, and rates went down about 30% at the same time, which is just an incredible, incredible fall. Yeah. So that's true rate. Now let's, that's, that was with fuel. So let's back out fuel because even though prices have gone down, we didn't factor in fuel here. So looking at the same thing, but I backed out the cost of fuel, we really peaked at 249 after we back out the cost of fuel. Now we're down to $1.80 in the spot market. Um, so again, we've just seen a drastic, a drastic drop in the volume of freight in the spot market and it's caused owner operators to, to you know, really feel a pinch especially those that are running under their own operating authority. Think about how much this changes from region to region also. That's something as an owner, you wanna find a way to search and find out is where is your market? And how does that volume change if you're in the Northeast versus the Midwest versus the Southwest and so on? Because when you plan your loads, if you're going into a freight deficit area, you need to have that planned ahead of time, what your plan is gonna be. All right, so that's the spot market, right? Um, that's for those that are out on their own. Now this is the contract market. So this is with major shippers, think about P&G, Walmart, that are doing long-term contracts with carriers. Um, and so this is the volume, this is the number of shipments. And you can see, um, 2018 was a great year, there was a lot of freight to move. Uh, fast forward to 2019, freight was tough that year. And then the pandemic hit and volume just dropped. We didn't know what was gonna happen. And then again, coming out of it, shipments went through the roof. There was so much freight that it spilled over into that spot market and it's what made it so strong. Um, so then we look at 2022 and really we're just flat. Um, we're not down, we're not up in terms of the volume of freight. Uh, so really that tells us freight has stabilized. We saw that great boom, we saw the, the big recession and, and really the volume of freight has stabilized. But then we fast forward and we look at rates. Rates are what matter, right? Um, and so again, 2018 was a really good year. 2019, early 2020, rates went down. And then we just saw an incredible boom where rates just went through the roof because there was so much freight to haul. Um, and so really what this tells us is the blue line, it's going down, yes, but what it tells us is that it's stabilized, but then at the end of 2022, we started to see downward pressure and we're continuing to see that today. 
So the pressure is coming from capacity over capacity. There's still freight there. It's less than the peak, but there's still freight there on it that we normally expect, but capacity is so much higher. That's the competition. That's the gentleman sitting in the other row behind you. Your collaborators and your competitors. You have to think about it in those terms, I think. So um, at ATBS, we work with about 15,000 owner operators. We also work with truck lines, leasing companies, things like that, just because we like to keep a pulse on the market to understand what's happening. And so we surveyed about 200 fleets across the country, major fleets, um, just to kind of ask them what, what they're feeling this spring and, and what they think is going to happen. Uh, a big thing that was recurring amongst the fleets was that ICs need to change their mindset. We had that two-year boom where things were easy. It was so easy to make money. You didn't have to worry about your costs. You didn't have to worry about fuel, fuel costs. You didn't have to worry about revenue, anything. You could just go run and make money. Um, so you really have to you know, change your mindset right now and watch your costs and maybe take that extra load. Um, there's also downward rate pressure right now. Uh, we're seeing that not only in the spot market, but at fleets as well. Um, it's, we do believe that's almost over. Uh, freight cycles should normalize. So during COVID, um, in, in, in that pandemic era, freight cycles were all over the place. We would see a nine-month freight cycle happen in two weeks because there was so much freight, so little capacity. Um, there's also political and regulatory issues that are persistent. Think about AB5 in California. Um, definitely a problem that, that everybody has their eye on. And then another thing that fleets are saying is that there is excessive downtime right now. And that's many, many factors. Um, one of them is that people's lifestyle expectations changed in that boom cycle. So when things were going so well, people took more time off because they were making so much money. Well, things have gotten harder and we haven't adjusted our life cycles back to work harder when things got a little bit more difficult. But then also think about maintenance and downtime that, that comes around that, right? Um, there's a lack of mechanics, there's a lack of parts. So when you go down, you go down for a long period of time right now. And that's a really, really big deal, not only because of the cost of that, but the opportunity cost that's associated with being down for, for extended periods of time. That's so correct, because that's where planning your preventive maintenance uh, when you are planning time off is so valuable, because you're not double dipping on your off time, things like that. The uh, politic, remember the political cycles. To be honest, we're not that far away from a presidential election. There's going to be financial influences from the federal government that they're not going to try, they're going to try to prevent our economy from crashing any worse than it is. So there is a, uh, those outside influences through uh, that type of uh, political activity that sometimes we tend not to think about, but it's coming, it's a year away. It, you know, it'll happen before the election. All right. So also in our survey, we wanted to ask the carriers, because they have a good pulse on, on the economy, what's going on in trucking, right? They, they live it like we do. What, what do they think is going to happen? When is the freight market going to bottom out? And most of the major carriers across the country actually believe we're, we're near the bottom. Um, so they, they all truly believe um, that first or second quarter of this year, freight is going to stop going down and level out and hopefully recover from there. But, but most major carriers, again, who have a great pulse on what's happening, do believe we're near the bottom uh, of this downward pressure. All right, and so in addition to that, what do they expect to happen to rates as they continue to go down for a little bit longer? Again, we're almost out of it, and a lot of the fleets do think we still have a little bit more downward pressure to go in terms of true rates. So most fleets think we're gonna go down somewhere around three to 10%. Um, again, in these next few months, it should level out soon though, and, and we're near the bottom. Um, this was a couple months ago, so this could have changed and we could be almost out of it already, all right? So that's just kind of setting the stage, what's going on in trucking, what we're seeing um, both in the spot market as well as contract market and what, what carriers are saying, right? They have, they have a major influence on the market. So that's what's going on. Let's talk about what owner operators are seeing and, and what's happened to clients of ours over the last year. So um, don't read into this, but, but essentially what we do is we take year over year information and we, we see what's happening with owner operators. Um, so what happened in 2022 versus 2021 and then again, to try to give you tips on how you can change your business um, coming out of that. So first thing, let's look at the revenue stuff. So miles, revenue per mile, gross revenue. What, what happened year over year? What are we seeing right now? Uh, so this one was very, very, very surprising to me. Um, and we'll talk about it here in a second. But miles 
were down 11% year over year. So in 2022, the average IC ran about 11% less, almost, almost 11,000 less miles year over year. And that's counterintuitive. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that here. Uh, what we see here is a 20-year trend line. So what's happened with miles for owner-operators over the last 20 years? And so back in 2003, the average IC was running 140,000 miles a year. Um, pretty incredible, actually. Uh, but, but what's notable, and, and what we haven't seen change yet, is if you look at 2008, um, that's when the Great Recession happened. And so trucking got pretty bad. Everything got pretty bad, right? Um, so when trucking got bad, owner-operators ran more miles, right? Because rates were lower, so they had to run more miles to make up that lost income. And they did it. Fast forward to 2019. Things were really, really good in trucking in 2018. We saw miles go down. 2019, freight got tough. And again, in 2020, miles picked up. Owner-operators responded and ran more miles. Um, now, fast forward to, to now, 2021, 2022, things have gotten tougher over the last year, but we have not seen miles pick up. We continue to see a downward trend. Um, and so there's a lot of reasons for that, Gary. Well, I think there's several influences, some inside, some outside. One, uh, if they did have those big profits and they got used to not running, that habit, that's a powerful habit, so that they didn't want to run, they didn't want to work. We had the influence of the government uh, loan programs, the uh, PPP and the EIDL, yeah, whatever the, that acronym was. All the stimulus money. Yeah, and, and still today, I do meet and talk to owners that are living off that money. So that's influencing them not to work because as long as they have some cash in the bank, they feel like they're okay. So you have to be careful how you measure. Uh, when there's opportunity, you need to be ready to act and take advantage of it. All right, so it was so surprising to me because again, freight got tougher. I thought miles were actually gonna rebound and pick back up, especially that fourth quarter of last year, that I decided to take a five-year look at it. Um, and if we look at it, five years ago, the average IC was running 108,000 miles. Uh, throughout time, it was stable, it was stable, and then the pandemic hit and we've fallen off a cliff. Um, so we've lost 23,000 miles in capacity for the average owner operator over the last, over the last five years. And the thing that's so amazing about that is there's roughly 350,000 owner-operators in the country. So 20,000 miles times the 350,000 owner-operators is, is almost 8 billion miles of capacity that we've lost in the last five years, which is really incredible to think about. Um, so it's just, just a huge downward trend. Um, surprisingly, it hasn't changed yet, and that's something that we all have to work together to make more money. If we're, if we're going to make more money, we're going to have to change that trend here in, in the near future. So... Um, revenue per mile was up about 24%. I'll tell you, and we'll just go quick through this because that was almost all fuel surcharge. So that, the, the rates themselves stayed pretty level actually from 2021 to 2022. Um, however, the fuel surcharge went way up because of the cost of fuel. So that, that rate increase really was, was to offset the cost of fuel. All right, so one thing we like to look at at ATBS is we like to understand, does it make sense to run at a motor carrier or does it make sense to get your own operating authority? And so this chart tells us at the bottom here, we believe it takes about 50 cents more a mile or you have to generate about $52,000 more in revenue in order to run in the spot market versus run for an average motor carrier. The reason for that is you have to pay for your own licenses, permits. You have additional insurance that is insanely expensive right now. You have to buy your own trailer. You have to do all the booking, billing, and all that fun stuff. Not only that, but operational losses are, are massive, right? If you're at a carrier, you've got a trailer pool, you do drop and hook, and you're on your way. If you've got your own trailer, you're sitting, you're waiting, shippers are delayed, all kinds of crazy stuff. There's another huge factor that a lot of people that are never been in a uh, established fleet, the discounts you receive, not only for fuel, but other services, tires, uh, other... Um, things that you have to buy for your business, those discounts, they add up and they are huge savings. They can be $10,000 a year very easily to you. And the other part, when you think about the insurance, if you're on a percentage, you don't pay insurance if you're not running, you only pay it on the percent. 
If you're an independent, that insurance bill comes due every month, whether you run or not. Definitely. So what this shows us over time on this line chart here is, is it better to be in the spot market or run for a motor carrier? And so again, um, the pandemic hit and it was tough in the spot market. The freight fell off the map. But then coming out of it, again, we saw that freight volume just increase like crazy. It got moved to the spot market. And so rates went through the roof where we saw a peak where you could make $1.36 more in the spot market versus the motor carrier. It only cost us 56 cents to get there, but we made $1.36 more. So that's a net gain of 86 cents a mile. Yeah, that's huge. Huge. So we saw a massive migration of owner operators going from a motor carrier, getting their own authority and moving into that spot market. But since last year, we've seen it go the other way drastically and quickly, where right now there's about a 33 cent difference. So you can make a, maybe 30, 30 cents more in the spot market, but it costs you 50 cents more to get there. So it's a huge net loss at this time um, to run in the spot market. Sure, you can still do it and be successful, no question about it. Um, you know, with, with connections, with talking with, with uh, brokers and, and, and having established lanes and things like that, you can do really well. But the average folk is really struggling in the spot market. We're seeing them move back to motor carriers. All right. So quickly here, revenue was up 10% year over year. Um, it didn't seem like it, right? But again, that's all fuel surcharge. That fuel surcharge really pushed up um, revenue. So we'll see here shortly that that extra $16,000 we made in revenue last year went out the smokestack. All right, so revenue, now let's talk about co costs. <clears throat> costs are difficult and they're up everywhere and we all feel it on every level, um, especially in trucking. So fixed costs were actually flat year over year. So truck payments, insurances, things like that, that, that don't really move, they were actually pretty stable year over year, um, only up about 1%. However, variable costs went through the roof. Um, fuel being a major factor in that for sure, um, but maintenance as well. So variable costs went up a huge, huge factor year over year. And the one thing I really want to point out is the variable cost per mile, which is that line chart. So in, at the end of 2021, our average variable cost per mile was about 60 cents a mile. Fast forward a year, and we're at about 90 cents a mile. So the average variable cost for an IC right now is about 90 cents a mile. Um, but it's important that you get a handle on your own, right? I mean, that's one of the most important things you can do. The unseen cost in these things that you're looking at right here is the loss of uh, revenue. The time where the operator, the owner of the truck, they're sitting at home, they have bills still coming in with no income. It, there's no way, no good way to measure that as a group, I don't think. But individually, if you break it down yourselves and you know you're doing a salary for yourself every uh, week or whatever, that's an important thing. Because I know operators whose trucks were down for anywhere from two to four months in a shop. How do you survive that? The way these guys, the, the ones I knew that I worked with survived, they contracted and drove for someone else while their truck was repaired. They didn't wait and sit at home. They found a re way to replace their income. So when you have a breakdown and it's going to be long, you've got to find a stream of income. All right. So total costs, we saw fixed, we saw variable. Total costs were up 15%. Again, we know most of that came from variable, variable costs. The average IC was just under $1.50 a mile in costs. Um, so a, again, that's the average. It's important to know your own. Everybody's is different based on you know, your truck, your maintenance savings plan, everything that's involved in it. Um, but this is a good, good benchmark and, and a good place for you to say, hey, let's, let's take a step back and look at what, what mine is and what I need um, in order to be successful. All right, so fuel, we won't spend much time on this. We all know what happened there. Fuel went through the roof, went up about 50, almost 52% year over year, the cost of fuel, um, which is really an incredible, incredible number. Um, but if you're doing the right things, which we'll talk about here in a second, fuel really shouldn't matter to you. If, if, if you're doing the right things, getting good fuel mileage, the fuel surcharge should offset it um, and, and really not make a big difference for you. So. We want to look at fuel mileage over time because it's so important right now. I mean, it is the, the number one cost you have, but it's also the one you can change the most overnight. Um, and so we look at this chart on the left here, fuel over time, and in 2020, we saw fuel mileage spike. It went really, really high. People were creating great efficiencies out of their trucks. Um, and really, I think it's because there was no congestion. Um, the world was shut down at the time, and you could just run through cities without slowing down. There wasn't bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. 
Uh, a lot of our clients told us it was the most fun they've ever had driving because they weren't sitting in traffic. They could just run. <laughs> so fast forward a little bit to the winter months, it always goes down. We see idle time up, winter blend fuels, things like that. Um, but in 2022, when fuel went through the roof, I was really expecting people to adjust their habits and for fuel to go up. And it hasn't yet. So a bit concerning. It is. What I have operators I talked to that did adjust and slow down as much as two miles per hour their miles per gallon increased, some of them from eight to 10. The savings combined with their fuel surcharge was they lost no uh, revenue as far as uh, net revenue. A lot of them had uh, routes, they never lost any miles because they were good at load planning. So it's, it's more than speed. The other thing I think we're gonna see, uh, if you wanna be careful to watch here in the future, as margins get tighter and maintenance uh, maybe gets put off and so on, that could be an influence on reducing miles per gallon. Because if we don't maintain our equipment as well as we should, we're gonna suffer. Yep, definitely. So I also like to break it out by, by industry. And so what we have on here is we have independent, the folks that are on their own operating authority. We got the drive-in, reefer, flatbed, and then the average. And so what's most notable here is most of the industry stayed pretty level. The only big increase we saw in fuel mileage is the folks that, that are independent out on their own authority. And I think the reason for that is because they felt the most pain. They needed to save that money because we just saw the downward pressure that happened. They needed to, to make adjustments and they're the first ones to do it because they felt it the soonest. They tend to not get as much fuel surcharge if any fuel surge broken out. Their rate may adjust, but it doesn't necessarily say here's fuel surcharge. That is an influence. Yep. So real quick, we talked about revenue being up to up 16,000 here at the bottom. So on the bottom right, we saw revenue up 16,000, but the cost of fuel was up almost 16,000. So again, all that increased yep. revenue we spent on fuel. Yep. All right, so truck payments over time, they continue to climb. As we know, they're more expensive. Um, they were hard to get for, for a considerable amount of time. Um, brand new trucks are, are through the roof right now. Luckily, the used truck market was, was insane the last couple of years. There wasn't enough supply. Um, there weren't trucks coming out, so there weren't used trucks being put in the market. Luckily, there are trucks be being put into the market now, and we are starting to see truck rates go down. I believe I saw the other day that they're down about 25% year over year from, from what they were. For, so, the, for the used trucks. For the used yeah. trucks, that's yeah. correct. New trucks, from the people I've talked to that are negotiating or looking at new trucks, they are not coming down. Uh, cost of interest has climbed, and the payment schedules they're looking at are greater than 4,000 a month, even with a trade-in. So a $240,000 truck having to finance 200,000, they're paying over 4,000. Plus, with that new truck, you have to remember, you're gonna have higher insurance costs. That's right. <clears throat> so the average I see at the end of last year was about 2,700 a month for a truck payment. All right. So maintenance, only up 2%, um, only up $276 year over year. And you look at that and you say, that's, that's wrong, right? There's no way maintenance is only up 2%. But let's, let's rewind. Miles were down 11%. If miles are down 11%, shouldn't maintenance be down 11%? But it's not. It's actually up 2%. So that's a big concern. Um, and the thing I want to look at here is on the, or on the, the line graph here, um, the black line is 2021. The average IC was about 12 cents a mile maintenance. Well, it's up to 14 cents a mile for the average maintenance now. So we're seeing incredibly higher costs by the mile because we have lower utilization. And that would be above any warranty. Yep. Yeah. So concerning trend, and we're gonna talk more about maintenance here because it's, it's the number one cause of failure. Um, and it's also one that we can plan for really well if we're doing the right things. So. The chart on the left is the same chart we just saw. That's the average IC. The chart on the right is the, the independents, the folks out doing their own thing. Their maintenance costs are considerably higher, almost 18 cents a mile right now. Um, and there's many reasons for that. Older equipment in particular, um, hard, hard to get parts sometimes, and uh, just that whole supply chain issue. The discounts they don't receive, uh, that's an issue. And, and that all plays in and it begins, those pennies begin to really add up. They do, absolutely. Not only the pennies, but the downtime, right? Which we've oh. already kind of discussed. It's that opportunity cost. When you're down, you're down for a while. And that's, 
your fixed costs are st still coming in, your home bills are still coming in, everything's still happening, but you're not, you're not generating any revenue. It puts your business at risk also because you may have a customer that's used to you providing that service. If you're unreliable, what are they gonna do? There's a good chance they're gonna have to seek another carrier. All right, so this just shows maintenance over time. The top chart shows total maintenance costs. Um, and so you can see it's fairly stable the last few years um, in terms of total maintenance cost. But again, let's remember, miles are down 20,000 miles a year. So maintenance should have gone down in total costs, but it has not. Um, which again, parts are more expensive, labor's through the roof, availability, it's all difficult. But if the bottom chart here shows us again by the mile and it continues to climb. Maintenance costs per mile continue to climb and climb and climb. So everybody needs to have an incredible maintenance savings plan. You need to understand the age of your truck, how many miles you run, what kind of freight you haul, where you are in the country, all kinds of different things, but you really need to have a custom maintenance plan to, to make sure you're successful. In addition to savings, you need to establish with your bank lines of credit. That means that you have that capital you can borrow to do those repairs, to do those improvements you need. You don't want to exhaust your savings 100% and be left if you have a true, true emergency. You want to work your your credit, your capital uh, uh, availability, because that way that also helps your uh, credit scores and so on. So you have the ability to borrow. Definitely. Yeah, and, and what I always tell people is no one's ever gone out of business because they saved too much money. So having a huge slush fund for maintenance and that downtime and your home bills is, is very important because you can't go out of business for having too much cash on hand. All right. So we looked at revenue, we looked at costs, now let's talk about the fun part, how much money are ICs making? All right, and so this is painful. The average IC is down 10%, almost over $6,000 year over year in net income, um, which is difficult. Uh, when when uh, prices everywhere for everything else are up, the average IC lost money um, year over year, which is a very difficult pill to swallow. Um, one thing I really wanna point out here though is on the line graphs up here, uh, the net income per mile, so the take home per mile to the truck is actually flat. And so that tells us that the profitability is still the same, it's just we didn't run enough miles to make up that difference. So if we would have ran that extra 10,000 miles we lost, we actually would have been above where we were a year ago. It's that lost utilization that's costing us so much money right now. When you look at this and you think, oh, you know, this flat number, but where do you place yourself? My recommendation, my suggestion is you take that number times 1.5. That should be like your goal to be trying to seek out 1.5 times the average on these numbers as far as income. And that is where I suggest people start. It is possible. We have people that are doing that and doing it consistently in today's market still. Absolutely. So net income over time. Again, the top is total net income. Again, we kind of peaked in 2021 when, when freight was on fire. I mean, it, it, again, it was easy to make money then. Um, since then, rates have slipped, miles have gone down, things have changed, and total net income has gone down. But again, on this bottom chart, I reiterate that the, the profit per mile has stayed pretty level. So we can make that extra money. We just got to figure out how to maybe change some things around, get that extra load in, which we'll talk about here in a second. Mm -hmm. All right. So what does all this information mean? I mean, it's a, it's a lot of stats. It's a lot of data. Um, miles are down massively, which we already talked about, but net income per mile isn't. So that extra load is so important because you've already hit your fixed costs. So all you're paying really is variable costs on that extra load, meaning the profitability on the extra load is considerably higher. Absolutely. One, one extra load a month makes it. It's like working an extra month for the whole year. Uh, and like I say, it, it dilutes a lot of those costs. Yep. So revenue per mile slipping, it's slipping everywhere. And so we're seeing turnover um, up all over the place. Uh, but, but people don't realize the cost to move. The grass is not always greener on the other side. Not only that, but the downtime that comes with the move is, is huge. Generally speaking, it takes ten to $15,000 in lost revenue um, in order to, to move carriers or to change your situation. And so you really need to think hard. Um, you need to know your costs. You need to do a new budget. You need to do everything you can before you make a move because it is so costly. Um, people don't realize what it's actually doing to their business to move. There's another compliance issue to moving, and I would suggest that if you're thinking about changing companies or going to work for a company, 
you go to the FMCSA Safer score and search that company's uh, MC number and find out what their score is. You don't want to go to a company that has already got high risk problems with their operators or drivers, where the inspection rates are high, where the accident rates are high, that could ruin your ability in the future. So their equipment, if you're pulling their trailers, if their trailers are not maintained the way they need to be, that's a compliance issue. You're gonna suffer. So that safer score, it tells you a lot. You see the miles, inspections, you see so much. If you've never done it, you'd be amazed. Search where you are now, you can learn a lot. Definitely. Um, so again, know your costs. Again, fuel mileage has not improved. It's your number one cost, but it's the thing you can change right now. You can change your driving habits, and it's hard. It takes time, it takes focus, it takes determination. Um, but you can do it right now. You can slow it down. You can use your cruise control better. You can control your braking. There's habits you can do. There's technology you can use to make improvements right Planning away. your hours, learning to use the split sleeper if you got an ELD or a paper, it doesn't matter. Learning how to manage that time most efficiently. That's one of the biggest things to be able to slow down. Yep. And so the best operators are doing both those, right? They're taking that extra load, but they're also slowing it down and getting that better fuel mileage, going through, going through everything, looking at their numbers, making sure they're doing everything they can. And then lastly, what does this mean? Well, save for maintenance, right? We already talked about it. It is so, so important. And again, it's the number one cause of independent contractor failure is a major mechanical failure. And it's not always because of the, the failure and the high cost of it. Again, it's that opportunity cost. It's because your bills at home keep coming in. Your truck payments keep coming in. And so if you don't save money for that maintenance and downtime, um, it's pretty easy to go out of business right now. Investigate the warranty, but understand the warranty before you buy it and ask a lot of questions. Uh, it's like your health insurance, preferred shops, preferred carriers, so on and so forth. Yep. But don't just think I'll buy a warranty and it'll cover everything. No, it doesn't do that. But it can be a great uh, stopgap to help you uh, avoid that extra catastrophic loss, that engine loss, that transmission, so on. Yep. So what can you do? And, and we've got some great numerical examples coming up after this to kind of show what it actually means. Um, but the first thing you can do is do a new budget. I mean, how many of you do your budget every year? It's so important that you do it often, especially when there's changes, changes in, in revenue, changes in your life at home, changes with new trucks, maintenance savings, things like that. So you really need a good idea of a budget. And it needs to include your home costs, too. Right? I mean, it doesn't do you any good to, to have a budget for your truck if you don't have one for home, too. You've got to know what you need to do to be successful to pay your bills at home. Um, so, you know, what is that? You need a break-even point. How many miles each week or how much revenue each week, month, and year do I need just to break even with my trucking and home costs? Do you know what that number is? If you don't, there's ways to calculate it and figure it out. If you need help, go give us a call. We'll help you. Um, fixed cost per day. Do you know what your fixed cost per day is? What does it mean to take a day off? What does it mean to be down a week for maintenance? What's still coming out of your pocket? You really, really need to know that. Um, what's your variable cost per mile, right? If you know your fixed cost per day and you know your variable cost per mile, you should be able to calculate your profitability on every, lo every load right away. It's like working time and materials if you're a contractor. That's what you're doing. That's right. Um, contribution margin is important, especially when you've, you've overcome that, that uh, you know, fixed cost. So your contribution margin is your gross revenue minus your variable costs. And again, once you've hit your fixed costs, it's all profit. So it's important to know that. Um, and then again, benefits of better miles per gallon. What does it mean? You can do that in a budget. You can figure out what one mile per gallon does to your budget. You can figure out what an extra load does to your profitability just by looking through it. Um, so once you have that budget, it's like a road map. Next, you gotta track it, right? So you have a plan, but you actually have to watch what you're doing. So you have to have monthly Record keeping, you gotta look at P&Ls, you gotta analyze your numbers on a consistent basis, weekly, monthly, as much as it takes, but you gotta get in the habit of it. You gotta get familiar with understanding your numbers because that's what helps you make adjustments in order to be successful. And then, um, yeah, again, utilization, home time, all those things, you gotta, you gotta really think about it and understand that. So, just a quick illustration, and this is average numbers, um, everybody's situation is different, but you can do something very similar at home and, and, and understand this. So what I did, the average revenue per mile we saw was $2.14 um, last year. So what I did was I just did $2 a mile, average revenue, and one more load, let's say it's 500 miles. So 500 miles times $2 a mile, that's $1,000 in revenue we created. 
for that extra load. Now again, we've already hit our fixed costs, so our fixed costs are taking, they're taken care of, and we only have variable costs left. So we saw variable cost average was 90 cents a mile, 90 cents times the 500 miles. We generated $1,000 in revenue. We had 450 in costs. That last load was pretty profitable, right? Uh, $550 for that one extra load. If you do that 12 times in a year, one, one load a month, and you're up almost $7,000 just by running that extra load one time a month. All right, and again, I know it's a generic example, but it really illustrates what it means. Now take that first column, 500, make that a 200 mile load or a 250 mile load for double the rate. Yep. And that's what happens, and that's what we do, and you have to do that. And the profit even goes higher because you still have the same fixed costs, but your variable costs have dropped on that load. Plus, if it's the extra load for the week, odds are you may be feeling like you don't have the hours or miles. You start looking for a 500 mile load that stresses your hours where you could do a 200 mile. I've seen 100, 150 straight through loads that'll pay as much as that 500 mile load, even in today's market. All right, so that's just what one more load will do. Um, fuel, again, is the other thing that you can impact right away, right? You can, you can drive more miles if you have the hours, as Gary said but fuel is the thing you can impact right away. And so this is kind of busy, but what it really illustrates is the difference between six and seven miles to the gallon is about $8,500 a year or more. So just one mile per gallon difference is $8,500 more, and that's savings, right? So you run another load, you made $1,000, but it costs you 450 to get there. So every dollar you generate costs you a little bit of money and it's not profit. Every dollar you save goes directly in your pocket. So. It's pure profit by saving money. It, it literally goes in your pocket, money you get to keep. Um, and so let's just take the most basic example from the last slide. The most basic example, we made $6,600 more by taking that extra load. Then we fast forward and we, we, we took the load. Now we're gonna get that mile per gallon better. We've saved $8,500. You combine those two things, that's $15,000 in profit that you've gained by taking those two little steps right there. And I know they're not little. You have to work at each, each one of them but that's an incredible amount of money. Exactly. I'll plan that for you. You send me half the money and we'll both be happy. How's that? <laughs> yeah, just think about what would you do with an extra $15,000? What could yeah. it do to change your life? It's yeah. incredible what it could do for most people. Yeah. All right, so lastly, again, save for maintenance. Um, it's the number one cause of failure. You have the cost of the repair, you've got the downtime, um, your fixed costs keep coming in, your home bills keep coming in. So. Save, 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 save for maintenance. Um, it's absolutely a must. Even if your truck has a warranty, start saving now because it's, the warranty doesn't last forever, right? And you need some money eventually. Um, so have a plan, have a custom plan. The average ATBS client last year, again, was about 14 cents a mile, which is a, it seems like an incredible rate, or roughly $12,000 a year just in maintenance costs. That does, not, that does not account for downtime, fixed costs, anything like that. So. Really, really, really high numbers. Um, and again, it's very important that, that you're thinking about that every day. That way you have the money. Um, and I think preventative maintenance is, is a big part of it. You know, If it's a minor repair, try to get home. Try to get everything done when you're at home and when you're already on your home time. Because when you're out on the road, you're losing money in addition to that time off. Um, but if you're at home, you already had that time planned off, so it shouldn't impact your, your profitability. Really good pre-trips can prevent a lot of those issues too. We see people that don't do the pre-trip, and they're a few miles from the truck stop with a blowout or a flat tire. Now they need a road call. When if they'd have done the pre-trip when they parked, when they, before they left in the morning, they could have saved themselves a thousand, two thousand dollars. And that is a real thing that happens. None yeah. of you do that, I'm sure. So. <laughs> and then, last thing I'll tell you, there's a lot of changes with the IRS. What's going on? Um, they're hiring people, there's gonna be more pressure on independent contractors to have your taxes filed, to have your bills paid, or at least be compliant. Um, so make sure that, that you're filing your taxes. If you don't have help, seek help, we can help you. Um, but, but make sure you're keeping up on your taxes because it's hard enough right now, the last thing you need is the IRS knocking on your door as well. So make sure you're, you're up to date, make sure you've got a plan, make sure you're doing all these things to, to keep yourself compliant. Yeah. All right, just wanted to take some time and answer any questions anybody might have. You're talking about the, uh, if you run one extra load a month, then you're making X amount. Uh, my curiosity is I kind of run my business as I'm trying to make money, I'm trying to save money, 
but volume is what I'm trying to run. Is there like a, because you did it for one extra load, but like is there something like, okay, because if I got to run a little, extra, little bit faster to get that extra load, I'm losing some fuel mileage. But at what point is there no return or is there a point do you understand what I'm saying? I do, yeah. So you're looking for the balance, right? Of, of what speed do I need to run at versus hours in order to create the most income for yourself, right? Yeah, because if I slow down, I, don't, I won't make it. That means I'm stuck somewhere for 10 hours. Yeah, and... so there's, there's no exact answer for, for a general okay. population. Everybody's business is completely different. And so it's important that you have you know, statements, financial statements, like profit and loss statements, where you can look at it and play around with it. You need to make adjustments. You need to try a couple different things and find your own sweet spot. I'm going to I'm going to change up your I'm going to describe something to you. So what we have is pretty typical. The volume you call yourself volume. So in other words, you lump your loads together. You lump your you're looking at a block of loads and what I try to teach people is every load is an individual contract. When you finish a load, you are fired and you have to get hired again. So you build those, it's like blocks, you build them together. Now, yes, you want to maybe get as many blocks in there as you can, but focus on maximizing the profit for that individual load per 24 hours that day. That as an individual, as a small owner, you have to work on what we call economic efficiency to squeeze the most out of every dollar because you cannot run enough as a small owner, one truck, even a few trucks, to dilute the cost that you, that you think you can. The extra load will make a difference uh, doing what you can, but it's not like the fleet. Uh, so you can do more good by focusing on, if I can get five cents, 10 cents more a mile above, that's profit, versus trying to run more miles faster and ending up less. And that's a mindset, that's something that I work with people on, because that takes time to adjust. We get in that habit. We really have to be careful. I'll, I'll tell you probably the simplest way to start looking at it is look at your average revenue per day. That's really what you need to be looking at. How do I generate the most revenue per day? And then with, within my hours, how do I do it as efficiently as I can? That's, that's the simplest start you can have, and then you can need to refine it and dial it in, looking at your numbers from there. Yeah. Look at your, uh, by the hour. Figure out your cost and income by the hour, even. Yeah. On average, I run an extra one or two loads more a week versus, you know, the one or two extra loads a month. Wow. Okay. And those and last loads are probably very profitable for you, aren't they? They can be. Yeah. Um, I'm... Yeah, like my rate per mile is high, so I can afford the fuel, but I can't afford the fuel. You know, it's, I run a lot, I run heavyweights, 105,000 pounds on a daily basis, flat deck. Um, half my time I'm in the mountains, and like, you, if you push it to go up a hill, oh, yeah. you you can save yourself five ten minutes. So you got 10 hills in a day, that's an hour, you know, like that I've got ahead. But does that hour like equate to how much fuel I've lost? You know, like I just, that's what I struggle with. Sure, and I think that's what Gary was alluding to is once you get those financial statements, you can break it down by the month, the week, eventually the day and the hour, right? Once you get it refined. Right. Right. And that's where you can really say, hey, yeah. what, what did this hour do to me? It cost me, X amount more in fuel, so you have to try both things, right? Try doing it slower, see what your costs are, see what your time is, and then try pushing it and see what your costs are, see what your time is and how it impacts you. You really have to get that granular and analyze every number every time. And it's so different for each individual. And it will vary for you even week to week, month to month, throughout the seasons, I'm sure. Great question, yeah. though. So when you download the, uh, the manual now, Will, you auto, will it automatically email you the updates? I, I got the version one from the old school where you handed them to us and we did the board. 
<laughs> and I still got it somewhere. But anyway. So it's always on the same page here at Overdrive. It, it probably will not automatically go to. That's a great idea. I could probably make that happen. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know if, you, if it yeah. sent you notification. Uh, it does yeah. not send you notifications, but every year it comes around this time, we, we put out the new updated version. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always free. So uh, it just takes a, a moment to go there and, you know, fill out the little form and download it again. But. Um, you know, and feel free to, you know, a lot of, we've had uh, some examples of folks um, taking this, uh, pr printing it out and, and, you know, handing it to somebody that might need it, you know, like it's, uh, you know, for, for people that have been doing, been in the business for a long time, something like this is, is maybe not always the right uh, tool for them. I mean, there, there's probably something in there for you for sure. But, you know, if, if, you, if you know people that are just getting in and you're trying to figure out a way to to kind of help them get things established, that's a good way, you know. Yeah, and a couple last thoughts, you know, yeah. owner operators have a, a very difficult job. They have two jobs. They drive a truck and they run a business. And so you have to be business minded, you have to think about numbers. Things have gotten tougher, um, and so it's really important that you run your business well. And if, if you can't do it yourself, get help. There's help out there, we can do it, Gary can help. There's lots of people that can help you. Um, so you have to drive your truck, but you also have to run your business. It's two different aspects. Um, and lastly, I'll say, you know, tough, it's tough right now. Tough times don't last, though. Tough people do. So, you know, dig in, work hard, and you'll get through it. And if you run your business well now, think how much money you're going to make when it turns around. Yeah, I, I want to thank everyone for their attentiveness. And um, if you have any uh, questions or looking for help, just, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. And um, what I do is a little different. It's beyond what mentoring. It's very private, individual, customized help. Um, and I don't do the video things because I customize what you need. So, okay. Thanks, everyone, for attending. We appreciate it.